Hey crafty friends, this is Jennifer and I'm finally back with the promised video tutorial for the flapping wings mechanism. So in this tutorial I will show you how the mechanism works and I also made a card. But you won't believe it, a new issue arose when I created the card, one that I haven't had before. But I found a very good and simple solution to fix that issue. However, I have to admit that this mechanism is not yet ideal. So it works wonderfully for larger objects, such as the bat that I um, created in the past. But it is a little bit difficult or tricky for very small objects. So that I hope this is still helpful to you and that you will give it a try. And maybe we will come up with a better solution. And please let me know if so. Okay, so let's get started with the tutorial. And we will start with a simple model to show you the principle. I created this simple model to demonstrate you how the mechanism works. Uh, instead of acetate, I used pink cardstock and you can see that it bends when I pull the pull tab. So I'm using pink cardstock because it's easier to see, but for your card I recommend to use acetate because I tried several materials and acetate works the best and you need to check what weight of acetate you want to use because if it's too flimsy it won't be able to fulfill its task and if it's too heavy uh, it might get too hard to pull the tab so check what you have and if it works if your acetate is too low weight you can double it up so I have this piece of cardstock with a window cut into it and a piece of cardstock or paper that is a slightly smaller than the opening and I will adhere it to the side of this opening using double-sided adhesive And then I will uh, trim it down and then adhere the other side of this cardstock piece to my pull tab. So one end is adhered to the next to the hole and the other end is adhered to the pull tab. So the width of the pull tab um, doesn't matter. And now you can see that the cardstock bends when I pull the tab because the strip can't move uh, with the pull tab since it is adhered to the, um, the card base and therefore it needs to, to bend. And everything that's lying on top will get lifted due to that bending cardstock or acetate. And this is the principle of this mechanism. So for a butterfly or bee or bird or whatsoever, um, you would use two windows or openings to move the two wings. So I cut two strips of cardstock and I will adhere them to both of the windows. Oh, and um, always make sure that the adhesive is on the same side of both openings and that the two strips um, have the same length. And then I will uh, adhere both of these strips to one pull tab. So they will get adhered to the same pull tab piece. And now they both bend at the same time when I pull the tab. And when you adhere something with two wings, for example, to the center, I uh, will use a heart for this purpose. Um, both sides will get lifted up 
when you pull the tab. So I'm trying to get it centered. On the back of my card panel, I will use some cardstock strips to secure my pull tab. For, for my card later, I will use the dies that are included in the uh, Let's Post pull tab or in the Waving pull tab sets by Lawn Fawn. But for this purpose, I just cut them on my own and I will adhere one of them between the two openings. And then one to the left and one to the right next to the two openings. So I'm repeating that step twice and this is uh, what I end up with. So my this will guide my pull tab uh, and keep it straight. So, and this is how this works. Uh, but this mechanism is not limited to flapping wings. You can also use it for something that opens in the center outwards, like a gate, for example, or a double door. Um, what I will demonstrate in this example. So I cut two doors using the shutter front door die by Landfawn, and I'm adhering these two die cuts to the left and the right of the two openings, meeting in the center. And now when I pull the tab, the two doors open outwards. So this would be another example how to use this. Okay, so before we start with the card making, I wanted to mention that I found it to be very important what kind of cardstock you use for your winged object. So for my first card I did, the one with the butterflies, I used very heavyweight cardstock without bending the wings. So they um, kept lying nice and flat on the card base, but that made it very difficult to lift the wings. So I had to use very heavyweight strong acetate, which means that pulling the tab really became um, an act of strength. Therefore, I used usual cardstock for my next card, the one with the bat, and folded the wings back and forth to make them easy to lift. And that worked very well. But when I tilted the card, the wings fell down, which made the bat look really sad. So I cut the wings again from copy paper and glued them to the back of the image, which prevented the wings from falling down but didn't interfere or didn't hinder the mechanism. So this turned out to be a very good solution. And I actually plan to do it for this card as well. But in the beginning, I forgot. So you will see me fix that at the end of the video. Um, but you can just try whatever you have and see if you find a good cardstock or another solution. And if you find something working very well, I would be very happy if you would share it with us. So I have prepared everything for my card. I have to admit that I used two discontinued sets. I apologize for that. But there are plenty of other sets that might fit that purpose. And this is the, the waving pull tab. I cut it three times, two times from purple cardstock and once from heavyweight white cardstock. I have two acetate strips and the stabilizer piece uh, that we will use to stabilize the pull tab. So now to figure out where I need to cut my openings for the mechanism, I'm laying out my butterfly where I want to have it on my card. And I looked for a die that will fit behind the butterfly's wing. And I found one in the coordinating dies of the Just Add Glitter stamp set. So this is the die for this small ink pad in the set. And I'm cutting it two times. And for whatever for whatever image you will use, you can just shop your stash and look for a matching die that will fit the purpose, or you can just cut it with your scissors or craft knife. And now I'm adhering the 
acetate strips next to the two openings. And you want to put the adhesive at the side where the pull tab sticks out. So if your pull tab is on the right hand side of your card, you want to um, have the adhesive facing towards this side. So since we're now working from the back, it is the left side. And one thing I found is that a small opening is much trickier than a big one. So if you start with this, I recommend to start with a bigger image because um, it's much easier to make the mechanism work. Okay, I'm making sure the, the strips are well adhered. And now I'm folding them over to double them up. So you, you can have two strips and adhere them together, which would be easier. Um, for some reason, I chose to do it this way. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I was afraid that one strip of acetate wouldn't be strong enough to lift the flaps, uh, the, the, the wings of the butterfly, um, because it is very low weight and not sturdy at all. So it's a little, um, a little flimsy. And now I'm adhering the stabilizers. And here you can see why I cut one in half, because I want it to fit between the two openings. And I'm very limited uh, in regard to space. So uh, I was just able to fit half of a strip. And then I can adhere the, the second one uh, next to the the first opening, so the side where the pull tab sticks out. And I'm using my pull tab to get it straight. And I'm not adhering the third one yet. So because you can use it as a stopper, you can see the, the pull tab has these two prongs or legs or whatever you want to call it. And um, these work as a stopper. Now I'm adhering the three pull tab pieces together and I'm doing this A because of uh, having the same color um, as my back uh, background and B for more stability because I have to pull really hard when I use two strips of acetate and I don't want the, the pull tab to bend or tear or anything. So I'm making it as stable as I can. And then I can adhere it to the two acetate strips. So I put some double-sided adhesive to the, to the end of both strips and then adhere my pull tab. And it's sticking out of the card, but we can shorten um, the end of that pull tab later. So now I can close the two stabilizers using double-sided adhesive. And then I was facing an issue that I haven't had before. And I'm using this model to show you what happened. So I used a pink and a, a green strip for this demonstration. And you can see that both pieces bend in the first or second hole, wherever you want to start to count it. Um, I think this is due to the length of the strips that I used. I'm not sure, but I found an easy way to fix this. So after adhering the first strip, I will use a scrap piece of cardstock and adhering it over this strip where the hole is. I'm just making sure I don't uh, glue it shut. And then I'm adhering my second strip. And then I can adhere the pull tab. 
and you can see that the issue is fixed. So because the green strip can no longer um, enter the this hole or this opening, so it needs to bend in its um, intended position. Another way uh, you could fix this is to have the strips adhered to the top of the um, of the two openings and then use a scrap of cardstock to connect the two cardstock strips which would be the acetate strips uh, on my card and then I can adhere my pull tab to this connector piece. Or you can have a pull tab um, wide enough to cover both strips, um, whatever works for your card design. And now when you pull it, um, the two strips will bend at the same time, whatever works for you. So I read it, um, the first steps that I already, that I've done before. So, and this time I'm using, um, two strips of acetate that I glued together uh, up front and before adhering them to the card. And you can see on my background, I already adhered um, a scrap piece of cardstock over the, uh, the one hole and it's adhered just to the top, so I can slide my, my acetate strip below that. Okay, and then I repeated the same steps as I did before. I adhered the two acetate strips to the left side and then adhere my pull tab. And I'm making sure if it's working. And it is, and so I can re-adhere my, my stabilizer, stabilizer pieces. And I also adhered the, the, the third stabilizer piece, which will also function as a stopper. And now I can adhere my, my butterfly by using some very thin double-sided adhesive in the center. And I can check if the mechanism works and if the wings will get lifted by pulling the tab. And now I'm assembling my card by adhering the front panel, making sure I don't have glue at the pull tab. And I will use double-sided foam tape to adhere my panel to the card front. And I'm being very generous with my foam tape to prevent the card from sagging. And a ton of foam tape later, I'm ready to adhere my front panel to the card base. And then I can check if the mechanism works. But since I didn't fold the wings, um, the body got a little bent and therefore the embossing cracked. And the wings stay lifted. So as I mentioned for the bat, I, I folded the wings back and forth, but I, want, I don't want to do that with, the, with this butterfly because of the embossing. So instead I decided to cut the wings. And I cut an additional butterfly from copy paper. And now I'm cutting along the body of the butterfly to make the mechanism work better and to prevent uh, the folding or the bending of the body. Now I can adhere the, the butterfly to the copy paper version and then I will add another layer of embossing powder 
to the center, so to the body of the butterfly, to repair the damages that I, that I caused. Then I can adhere it back to the, to the card base using a thin strip of double-sided double adhesive and placing it between the two openings. And then I'm checking if it works and it's much better than before. So you can see that the wings fold nicely without bending the body of the butterfly. Um, the wings are still slightly lifted, but it's better than before. I assume this is because this butterfly is such a small image. I haven't had this issue with the bat, which is much bigger. So I assume it's due to the size of this object. But um, it's not too bad. On, on the other hand, you, this might be a, a look you're going for, so you could use this for your advantage. Yeah, but it's why I recommend to start with a bigger image, because I think this um, makes it much easier to work with this mechanism. And this finishes my tutorial. So to finish up my card, I just added a few gemstones and uh, some additional leaves and an arrow uh, on the pull tab to show the recipient what to do with it. Thank you very much for bearing with me until the very end of this tutorial. I hope this is helpful to you and you might give it a try. And if you have any suggestions how to improve this, please let me know in the comments or on Instagram. It would be highly appreciated. And as always, I thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.